Welcome back to AB Productions for another episode of the brand new to 2023 podcast, The Anything Podcast, with your host, Adam Bray, of course. Now, this week marks a rather special occasion. It's the 60th anniversary of the beloved, long running sci fi show. Yeah, that quirky little sci fi show, the one that I love the most. Yeah. Doctor Who. So join me as I go through time and space and celebrate the momentous occasion of the Doctor and their adventures. In 1963, Doctor Who started as a show for children. It was meant to teach them history and science, but became a national phenomenon for its story and how it was able to adapt from being a sci-fi show, having elements of different subjects and also going with different genres as well. Now, nobody in 1963 knew the Doctor and their adventures would be still on our screens to this day. Now, the original run of Doctor Who ran from 1963 to 1989, with seven Doctors to play the part. Now, Doctor Who wouldn't be on our screens today if they didn't invent regeneration as a way of continuing the show and making it what it is today in the storyline. Now, back when William Hartnell was the Doctor, he was playing the Doctor for a good while and he was getting rather ill. If you look back at a few of the other episodes, you'll notice that he may forget his lines and he was finding it hard to remember stuff so what happened was they came up with a way for them to recast the character and from then on other people was able to play the character not just one and it was that what made the show continue And if that didn't happen, the show would have been ended back in the 1960s and we wouldn't have 60 years of an icon. And I'm glad that they did that because I wouldn't have discovered it 18 years ago. 2005 is when I discovered the show. I was flicking through the channels on a Saturday night, as you do, and I came across Doctor Who. Not knowing where it was back then, I was 10 years old. I sat and watched it and my dad was asking me questions like, oh, how have you not seen Doctor Who? It's quite famous. I'm like, I've never heard of it. So I watched, I got hooked. I caught up with Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor, the Ninth Doctor. I made it then to watch David Tennant. And obviously regeneration was new to me. I didn't know what regeneration was. so. Suddenly having Christopher Eccleston suddenly turn into David Tennant was a shock. And obviously back then it was like, he was playing the Doctor fine, why have you replaced the actor? 
And I see why they've done it, because as people probably know, it's been widely known that Christopher Eccleston had a bit of a thing with Doctor Who team, and he had a bit of a feud with some of the higher people up in the production series and all that. I don't know the complete story. It's one of those things where there's speculations and rumours and stuff like that. Until things are completely confirmed, nobody knows exactly what happened and why Christopher Eccleston left the part so early and only did one season. I'd loved him to do another season. Everybody would. Because we didn't get enough of of the Ninth Doctor. And it's been a while, and it's taken him a while before he has agreed to do a bit of Big Finish, so then we can explore a bit more of the Ninth Doctor. But it would be good if he'd come back for a cameo or a episode of the main show on, on screen, so then we can continue the story. I discovered it, and for 18 years, I've enjoyed the show. All the way from Christopher Eccleston, all the way up to Jodie Whittaker. Now I'm making my way through the classic series of Doctor Who. I've not skipped the first, second and third Doctors because I don't want to watch them. At some point I will watch them, but I'm watching in a different order. I've decided that instead of watching it in the 1 to 7 order, in that complete order, I am watching it I'm watching it in a sort of weird order. So I'm watching Fourth Doctor at the same time as watching six and seven and I'm enjoying it. And I will go back and watch some of one to three. I will be watching five, six and seven as well. I will more than likely try and get a copy of The Unearthly Child to watch in in its entirety because, yeah, on that subject of that, obviously Doctor Who has been made for the 60th anniversary, available on the BBC iPlayer to watch all of the classic run, but unfortunately the classic run is not available entirely because there is missing episodes, of course. That back years ago, they didn't think it was going to be popular, for what I understand, and decided to delete the episodes out of the BBC archives because they didn't think that there would be demand for rebroadcast and how wrong they was. And nowadays, people are able to watch The Doctor in many different forms. They can stream it, they can watch on the DVDs and everything, but not in its complete entirety. Now, the only people that are able to watch Doctor Who in its entirety is people who was born, or fans, should I say, that was born before Doctor Who started in the 1960s. And it's one of those things where they was able to watch each of the episodes on broadcast and fall in love with the show back then. And it was one of those things where nowadays when fans want to go back and look at the show or fans want to go back that was around in the 1980s or the 70s that can go back and look at the show now but some of the episodes are not available when they can't see them. I myself really want to see every Doctor Who episode available. And I want to see every Doctor Who episode in its entirety. And until we somehow are able to get the episodes in their entirety from the original room, because out there in the world somewhere, there will be a copy of Doctor Who of every episode, the missing episodes. That was probably broadcast in another country that someone's keeping from us. And to go on to the subject of people keeping episodes, obviously the person 
that wrote the episode Unearthly Child or contributed to the episode Unearthly Child Son is keeping the copyright of that episode out of the reach of the BBC. So unfortunately due to that copyright they're unable to give us that episode on BBC iPlayer for the 60th anniversary of the show so people can go back and watch it because some people might not have the money to go out and buy on DVD and watch it. And I think it's great that they've released all of the episodes so they are available. What I don't like is... Yeah, I'm grateful for it, but it's not available worldwide. And I wish they was able to put onto a free streaming platform where it's available for all fans across the world so everybody has a chance to see the Doctor in the entirety of the run from the early episodes of what's available up until now. And I know that for the 60th and beyond the ha- BBC have signed a deal with Disney plus to release modern episodes but there's nothing saying that they are going to release episodes of the classic series on Disney plus which would be a good thing because then people in different countries could see the doctor and it would be good Yes, we in the UK have to pay, we have to pay a TV license and obviously for things to be available, but the app, BBC iPlayer, is technically free and we can watch everything from the 1960s till now of Doctor Who, obviously barring the missing episodes and obviously the episode was not allowed on there because of copyright reasons. Back to that, I looked into that and my views on that are I think that the guy should give the BBC the episode the show and that he should be grateful that his dad was able to be part of Doctor Who history and be at the birth of the series and be that he is you know he's very very lucky that that episode still exists and a lot of the fans will be like, I can load up my DVD player and I can watch that episode anytime I want. As I say, it's not as easy for everybody. Mm. I find that before the series became available on iPlayer, I was lucky to have a friend way back then. Now, we're not like directly like friends, but I was wanting to watch the classic series and I posted on one of the many Doctor Who groups on Facebook saying I wouldn't mind watching the classic series but I wasn't able at the time to afford to buy numerous DVDs and this person kindly provided me with a link to his Doctor Who library upon his Google Drive and I was able to access that library of Doctor Who episodes and actually watch it and now we'll see it's on BBC iPlayer. I can watch them as well. But anything that I can't watch from BBC iPlayer, I can go back onto his library and watch on there and stream it to my TV. Which is good. Which means I won't miss out. I'm very, very lucky. But some people are not as not as lucky, and I feel bad that in some somewhere someone's not going to be able to watch the Doctor and they're finding it hard to watch the Doctor because it keeps on getting put on to streaming platforms and removed for reasons and then put onto another streaming platform and then removed for reasons and vice versa and all that. I want to make it so that it's available worldwide, not just on DVD. Every streaming platform should have Doctor Who. They should ha- all negotiate rights for Doctor Who across the world in some shape or form where things are available. And each of them should go, right, Doctor Who, 
we want it available to us. The fans across the world have the right to see the show. And I'm all for it. Like, I'm obviously lucky being in the UK. It's easy, accessible. Obviously, BBC make the show. So it's one of those things where we are lucky to have the show by the BBC over here. But people of different countries, some people can't access it. And that's terrible. So 60 years of the Doctor. There are over 700, 800 episodes of the Doctor in entirety. Obviously some missing, so there's probably plenty more out there. And I love the show so much. And my take on the music of the show, now back in, obviously, the classic series, it was mostly difference. Obviously, there was different music for different scenes of the episodes and all that, and didn't really have what I would class as each of the Doctors having their own theme. Now, they wrote their own theme music for their opening titles, but they didn't seem to have their own in-episode theme, where, like an action theme, pretty much, where the Doctor would be saving the planet, and that music would play. And it wasn't until we had Russell T. Davies take over as a showrunner in 2005 and bring us Doctor Who that each of the Doctors then had a... that each of the Doctors not only had their opening title sequence theme, they also had a theme for when they was at action, was able to save the world, save the planet, save wherever there was in the civilization. And it was like a a theme that you could identify the Doctor with. So if you are a fan or a Whovian, that it would be recognisable to you. Like if you heard that song, you'd be like, I know who that Doctor is. And they also did it with the companions as well. Each companion seemed to have their own little theme that when that companion was on the screen and when things happen to that companion, that that theme would play and it would be recognisable to that companion and you'd know and it fit in with their storyline. Now, during the ninth to 12th Doctors, we had a brilliant composer called Murray Gold, who has now returned to Doctor Who for the 60th and beyond and has brought back his style of music to the show after his absence during Jodie Whittaker's run as a doctor. We turned to somebody else to do the music for the show. It didn't really go as well as what Murray Go brought to the show. The show turned mostly to electronic music. And yeah, There is some pieces in there that wasn't bad and it flowed well and all that, but comparing that to Murigal's epic themes with orchestral stuff like This is Gallifrey, I Am the Doctor, Tenth Doctor's Theme, just to name a few, they didn't hit as hard and it felt like there wasn't a theme for Jodie Whittaker. There's not a theme during her run as a doctor that you'd identify for each of the companions and there's not a theme or piece of music that you could say that is a doctor's theme music. And I loved how each version of the doctor had different parts of music that during their run would be brought in for certain scenes, obviously when the Doctor's action and he's getting ready to do what he does, has come up with his plan and he's pretty, pretty much calling to arms and he's making making a stand or doing something. And then the companion's theme is when obviously that's been explained and all that. I didn't feel like Jodie had that. She had good episodes. But she didn't have her most 
theme and I like how Moria Gold has returned and hopefully that's the return of themes of each character, themes of the Doctor and noticeable music with his style. So give an example, the 11th Doctor had his own call to action theme which was I am the Doctor and then he had various sort of theme musics like the Rings of Akaton music and stuff from when he was with Amy and Rory in his episodes. Notable stuff that if you heard it, you'd know. Notable pieces of that music was included in the last soundtrack for his episode. And you knew that you could call back to certain elements of his run as a doctor. And you could tell that it had been written as nostalgic and you would know that each of the episodes was kind of it's like closure for the character and then to start anew they moved on to Pierre Capaldi and then they did the same thing they established him a theme they established Clara a theme established Bill Potts a theme I established each and every character a theme so then you disting- you distinguish who's who and when that theme was played you go oh it's a nod to that character that character's on screen that character's there so yeah I believe that they've done well in bringing Morigal back into the show and Russell T Davies yeah it's like a going to be that it's a it's kind of like a part two it's like bringing back someone for another go and that's why i believe that they've brought back david tennant to play the 14th doctor because something's gone on and have made that storyline like something's gone on with the regeneration and something's wrong with the Doctor and their regenerations, that Jodie suddenly gone wrong at the end of her run, and it's the toy maker more than likely that's probably to blame for the instead of turning to Shuri Gatwa, we get David Tennant, and they tried to cover that up. They tried very hard to keep it a secret, but it got out there. So they had to announce it. And they had to say that. You know we don't know yet exactly why. You know the exact reason why. We'll find out this Saturday. Why. David Tennant returned as a doctor. Hopefully. Or the next. Three Saturdays. Will tell us why. The doctor. Has a. Recognisable face. That we have to roll with David Tennant being the 10th and the 14th Doctor. So it's all going to be explained, but I'm going to tell you what I actually want to happen with Doctor Who and what I'd like to happen for the future of Doctor Who. So I believe I've mentioned it in a video before, but what I want for the Doctor. Yes, we're going to have a familiar showrunner run the series again. And I don't want it to be that we're going to have a rehash of his run before. And loads of the elements are going to come back and it's going to be like nostalgic and fan service and whatever you want to call it. I want it to be something new. I want it to be like that we're going to get some new elements. I don't want to see tons of reused monsters again or reused foes or enemies. I want to see some new enemies. I want to see some new concepts, some new storylines, something that we haven't seen before, something that will make you surprised, something that you're not going to expect. That's what I want to see. And hopefully, 
hopefully that's what we'll get. I'm not going to go into Shooty Katwa's first season go, oh, we didn't get an awe moment or we didn't get a wow moment. Because I, I know that something's coming for Shooty Katwa's doctor. And I believe that it's going to be big. And hopefully that he'll get an episode with the Daleks and the Cybermen and the Master at some point during his run. But I hope that they give them particular free characters a break. Now, I know there's obviously an unwritten rule somewhere that says they've got to use the Daleks every season. Which I don't think is true. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's fine as it is, but if they overuse the Daleks, people are going to get bored of the show and think that it's a tired old piece of garbage, pretty much. And they're going to boycott if they keep on seeing the same villain over again. True fans, obviously not, but some people that are new to the show might be like, hang on, we're seeing this over and over again. Or people who are new into reviewing the show, or people that are new to, or people that have been fans for so long, they might go, "Hang on, the Daleks have been at the heart of the show since the beginning. They've been used a lot, not used a lot during some runs, and then used a lot across the new who, as people call it. And I want them to take them away, the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Master, and." Put them to bed for a little bit and then maybe a few seasons down the line just as Shui Katawa's got into the role bring in an episode just maybe one episode of each of them so then that Shui Katawa's got a chance to face the Daleks because each doctor in some shape or form has faced the Daleks at least once so we want to see what Shui Katawa's Doctors like with the Daleks, of course, and with the Cybermen, with the Master, with the classic villains. But I also want to see them bring back villains we haven't seen for a while. And obviously give a most modern take on them, but also bring back a few classic variations. Like they did with Jodie Whittaker when they tried to bring back the Sontarans but brought them back instead of being a modern Sontaran they brought them back as classic Sontarans and I like how they did that it'd be nice to see them pick other variations of of that and take a look through the history of Doctor Who and go oh that character hasn't been shown for so long and bring them back and it would be nice it'd also be nice to have a revisit from companions that haven't shown up for a, a good while and they did that a little bit in Jodie Whittaker's run where they brought back some companions that haven't been seen for years since the classic series or have only been back on audio now they're able to come back on screen as well so they have a chance to revisit that and you see the comparison and you see the how they are with the newer Doctor. Now that would be good, and it looks to be that during Shooter Gatwa's first few episodes, our first season, that we're going to be getting that. We're going to be getting the return of Mel from the six and seven Doctors run. So it's like they're slowly trying to bring back a little bit of it. And it could be fan service. And I'm not complaining. Like, they, they need to do it at some point. It's like a nod to say that they've not forgotten about what Doctor Who used to be. And they're going to the fans, hey, let's show you what's happening with this character and where they've been and you know how far they've come. And do they want to return and maybe even travel with the Doctor for a little bit. So, 60 years of Doctor Who, there's so much and 
I am so looking forward to what it becomes. And a little note as well. Recently, we've had the Children Need special with David Tennant, with a little bit of glimpse of David Tennant's Doctor for the specials. Obviously, the Star Beast, which is going to be showing on Saturday, is it's going to be his first episode. We see the Doctor, and he is at the birth of the Daleks, and he kind of gives Daleks their name. Now, people are going to be like, well, is that canon? Is the next series runner going to wreck on that, saying that the Doctor wasn't there at the birth of the Daleks? Because in Genesis of the Daleks, he was technically there at the birth of the Daleks. When, obviously, Tom Baker was playing the Doctor, he didn't give the Daleks a name. And there's also a backlash as well, because back when... Genesis of the Daleks, it's a Tom Baker episode I was actually seen. So I actually know what happens. A Doctor has a decision whether he wants to destroy the Daleks there and then, or let them be born. And things, obviously, you see how the Daleks are a bit destructive and they want to kill everybody and they want to be the rulers of the universe, pretty much. And then, obviously, flash forward to 2023 and we're seeing him accidentally name the Daleks and accidentally giving their iconic catchphrase and his plunger arm and all that. But then people are backlashing it because Davros, which we know normally we see in a half Dalek casing, is now able-bodied and able to walk. So most people go away from that thinking, ooh, this is meant to be depicted as Davros before he had his accident and then was bound to put in life support in the half Dalek shell with the terrifying like look that he has with not being able to like he can't see he has all that. Now the actor who has played Davros from the Tenth Doctor onwards, um, the actor obviously who who's played him has returned, to play the character and still has the iconic voice and all that, and he is playing him slightly differently. Now we don't know whether at some point Russell T Davies might show on screen how he would think Davros actually injured himself and was put on life support and all that. Now, I haven't seen enough classic who to see, see if you actually see that, but if it's shown, then obviously I'm going to come across it somehow or some at some point. But it's going to be that fans are not going to like how Russell T. Davis has kind of changed a little bit of the history of the show. And each show run has done that. They've, in a way, contributed to the series in their own way and expanded the history and expanded the timeline and the storyline. But they've also gone and, in a way, slightly changed bits and pieces of the history in a way to make things a little bit more understandable to people that maybe some of it didn't make sense and they've gone back and and changed it a little bit uh, where things have not been explained as much like we didn't really know the origins of the Doctor they've added that and they've put their own twist on it now future people past Russell T Davies could take the character or take any of the storylines or stuff like that, they could completely throw it out the window. And that's all on them. But I noticed how when Russell T. Davis brought the show back, Murray Gold was was there and obviously he brought the music and he changed the music and it wasn't anything. It was new and, and, and improved and they didn't have any of iconic 
things they could bring back from the classic series, but they obviously they brought the theme tune forward into the into the into the new obviously into the two thousands in two thousand five they brought the theme tune into into the now and obviously brought it from being where it was to where it is now and I like how they've what they've done with it. But there's elements in the theme that call back to the original. And I like it. And then we had Stephen Moffat that took over Russell T. Davis as the showrunner and made it his own, but also continued a little bit of the storyline and expanded what Russell T. Davis had started with. And he didn't retcon any of it. He he had companions come back from David Tennant's era. It's like there was behind the scenes and they wrote some stuff together. And during obviously Russell T. Davies showrunning days, he had Stephen Moffat write episodes. So it's like he was writing in history to continue it so that when he took over as a showrunner, which I don't know back then if he knew that, hang on a minute, sometime I'm going to be the showrunner, here's a episode or something that I'm going to expand on later. Nobody knew back then. But what he did right was, obviously, he wrote the Blink episode, well, made that icon- iconic monster with the Weeping Angels, and then he brought them back a few times, and it worked. So, yeah, going back to that, he- everybody brings their own variation to the Doctor. Not only the actor, but the showrunner brings their own take on Doctor Who. And I'm interested to see what is in the future. And I will continue watching whether we get an absolutely dreadful thing. I'm not going to just boycott the show if the show turns into garbage. I'm going to give it its, its thing. And I like the show regardless. I'm going to love the show. There's going to be an episode of the show that I like. And some episodes of certain series... There's only so many times you can go back and watch them. And with Doctor Who, there is plenty of times that you can go back and watch particular episodes of the Doctor and still enjoy them on more than one thing. It's harder to go back and watch certain Doctors of the New Run because their episodes from the first time you watch them are not as good to watch them a second time but sometimes you've got to watch them a second time to understand and go back and go hang on a minute I didn't get it the first time I might have to go back and watch it the second time but yeah I'm going to wrap up this episode now and enjoy the anniversary as a long time fan of the show as everybody else is going to do and on the weekend hopefully when we've had the first episode of the 60th anniversary specials i may do a review and a you know feedback on what i thought of the episode and into a little mini mini review what could come up as a podcast episode that might come up just as a normal video uh, so look out for that on AB Productions because I more than likely will post that either after the episode has aired on Saturday night or by Sunday evening. So I'm more than likely not going to do a watch along reaction to it, but you'll get my reaction to it at some point. If it's not on the weekend, it will be the f- start of the next week after. And I'll try to, if I start undoing. That thing to then continue doing the other episodes of 60th and then may start on doing the Christmas special when Shui Gatwa takes over as the Doctor and may then review his run. But at some point, I may go back and give you my take and reviews of certain episodes of New Who and may even go back to have a look at Classic Who and give you my reviews of them 
but maybe not all of Doctor Who completely because it's a long show and it would take a while to review every single episode. But what I could do is go back when I've watched a little bit of more of the classic Who and maybe have completed each Doctor that I can go back and go, hey, I liked episode this, this and this from their Doctor and, you know, give my reasons why and what I liked about them and stuff. I could do a overall like I did with 13. I didn't want to go back and go episodes one to so and so individually and think I can just give you an overall opinion of the Doctor after I finish watching them. So, but we'll decide later on. I've been Adam Bray, and this has been episode two of the Anything Podcast, the Doctor Who 6th anniversary. Stay safe out there, guys, and as always, if you're watching Doctor Who this weekend, when I do a reaction video, comment down below what you thought of the episode, and hopefully then I might take that into an episode and compare what the fans thought about it as an episode of my podcast or something on my on my channel. But look out for AP Productions bringing out more videos as much as possibly I can. Look forward to seeing everything what's to come for the anniversary of Doctor Who. And thank you for watching or listening to my podcast.